how a ship stays afloat and how well it balances while on their way is uh, greatly related to trim and in this video I show you how to do a trim calculation very straightforward add subtract and divide by two simple simple stuff and together with it is the question are we bending the ship especially the long ones you know if you get into a rubber inflatable canoe that's uh, more long uh, than uh, than wide so it, it has to be skinny and long uh, or if it's inflatable you can see that you can bend it in the middle right away steel ships will bend much the same way if they are long and skinny here's a chunk of foam say a hundred meters longer but it really has to do with the beam to length ratio if they are skinny and long they can bend like so not this spectacularly I'm just exaggerating to make a point okay we're talking centimeters here over a hundred meter ship so hulls do get bent with idiotic loading if you for example dump all the bulk cargo here in the middle of the ship the ship is gonna do this much like when your 400 pound uncle sits into an inflatable canoe this is how it's gonna look like so this condition is known as sag because beams sag this way and uh, possibly your facial and other features as well over time not to mention your relatives and the ship can also be bent this way if it's overloaded at the front and uh, well it doesn't matter which way the ship is going which one is the bow and the stern but it can be overloaded this way this condition is known as hog okay so ships can sag ships can hog so to all this trim is the first clue so trim is very simple here's a Kleenex box ideally ships sail level sideways port to starboard and level this way fore and aft now it's unlikely that ship that a ship be on perfectly level both ways but usually they are offset one way one side is heavier as well as say the bow or the stern could also be sloping heavier so in or, or sloping so or is heavier so sometimes the ship plows ahead this way I'm exaggerating of course again with this Kleenex box just to make a point but trim calculation uses both directions okay the transverse port and starboard and the longitudinal fore and aft directions will be featured in this trim calculation what I have here is a bunch of numbers those numbers are load line markings well it's actually the numbers from the hull we have a bunch of images here of course you have your uh, typical the, the uh, what the insurance company puts on the hull the circle with the horizontal line across that uh, lines up with the uh, summer load line markings that's fine and dandy but th this means or indicates the maximum draft or the maximum depth the hull can be covered with water that's nice for maximum but sometimes you can sail with less load but even if you do so so you don't have to necessarily cover these you can be well below somewhere in in uh, that range of the of the marks so even if like on this hull here so even if you are well below the uh, the maximum load line markings there you still have to make sure that the vessel is level port and starboard as well as fore and aft as much as possible so this is the trim calculation so you can see the numbers here how they at the I know it's the edge of the screen and I know it's small so you know I'm gonna switch off the light now but they typically are two digit numbers that are visible but not necessarily this one reads 27 28 29 30 31 those are feet okay right next to it is really hard to read uh, let me just find another one here this is more although a little bit grainy but you can see it reads 2 4 6 8 11 M 11 meter 2 4 6 8 12 m 12 meter so the numbers would go 
sorry, 10.2, 10.4, 10.6, 10.8, 11.0, 11.2, 11.4, 11.6. There are no decimal points or decimal dots anywhere on the hull, but these numbers are welded on so the painter can find them. And uh, here you can see maybe on this one that these numbers are raised, you can see a little bit of shadow there. So numbers are raised, painter can find them, and uh, knows what to paint white because the bureaucrats from the insurance company and the naval architect uh, dictate where the numbers go on a hull. So that's what I have here. No decimal dots as usual but they read 2.6, 2 3.2 3 Oh I have two 3.2's. We'll fix it. 3.4 and 3.4 there. These lines are at the bow and at the stern on port side and starboard side as well as repeat midships. So you have a set of six of these numbers actually on a hull. So in the practice problem that's coming up, that's what you see. This shape is just what I made out a triangle, rectangle and a circle. This is your ship. B is bow, S is stern with blue and port in red is port and starboard is red that's uh, that's also an s so we have two letter s on the board and uh, so this one is stern that one is starboard going back to the original concept here so when the load lines are painted on the hull they of course line up uh, 2.6 at the bow and again bow could be because this is just a rectangle it could be there or it could be the other way around it doesn't matter and you know what this this rectangle can relate to not only the longitudinal section of the ship but it can relate to the transverse section so this could be all of a sudden now uh, this could be the front of the ship that would be the stem and the hull would start here so this could be port in this case and this could be starboard the ship is coming at you okay so either which way 2.6 is line up on it port to starboard as well as fore and aft 2.8 3.0s 3.2s the numbers line up meticulously and consistently that's very important so it's uh, important that it isn't your, your cousin three times removed uh, who paints these lines or numbers on and uh, guesses where they should go so they should all line up like this and if the ship is loaded evenly then the water line is just gonna be through one of these anywhere it doesn't matter it could be wherever as long as it's not over the maximum line that's indicated by uh, the insurance company by the by the uh, circle and the horizontal line through it. So, this is how ship should float, but usually isn't the case. Usually the ship, let me just get rid of this water line here. The ship usually is somewhat, I'm gonna get rid of that one too, is somewhat healed over okay either this way or that way or is not level of course the task is to try to make it level but uh, that will take a little bit of repositioning some of the loads so when uh, when the ship is loaded it may look like this the bow could be uh, the waterline could be at the bow at the 3.2 mark and and I'm using simple numbers here, okay? These are not necessarily real numbers. And the stern could be bobbing up at the 2.8 mark. Now, this is a massive difference between the bow and the stern. So, but this is just a math example, just go with it. The, in real life, it's uh, under no conditions would this ship set sail anywhere. It's too much of a tilt. So, in this example here, I just copied these numbers. The 3.2 is here, the 2.8 is here, 2.6 is there. There's three, because I just picked uh, these numbers for the starboard and these numbers for the port. So the meaning of this 2.8 being here and this 3.2 being at the bow is this. And this is the bow, that's the stern. This is how the ship floats when you look at it from the side. Okay, this is the same ship, looking at it from the top. 
All right, let's crunch the numbers. This is how you calculate trim. Now, trim is the difference between the forward or yeah, the forward mean draft and the aft mean draft. The difference. Now, difference means subtraction business, but bef but you have four numbers here. That's too many for subtraction. You want two numbers, so you need to calculate the mean of this number and this number. It's very straightforward how you calculate the mean of anything. You add, in this case, these two numbers, 3.0 and 3.2. So that's 6.2. And then divide by 2. That's going to get you 3.1. So the mean draft at the bow is 3.1. So I'm going to put that number here. 3.1 for mean draft. The same situation repeats at the at the stern here, so the mean draft will be 2.7. Sometimes, and this is why I picked easy numbers, you know that the number between 2.6 and 2.8 is 2.7. But if you have more digits here, maybe maybe one more digit there, or the numbers are look confusing or whatever, you can always just add them and divide by 2. Bippity boppity, gonna get you mean. Let's calculate trim. Now we have two numbers, this being one, blue box and blue box. So, very simple to calculate trim. Trim is the difference between the forward mean draft and the aft mean draft. So, 3.1 minus 2.7. It's possible that this number sometimes is 3.1 and that number is 2.7. It's either which way you take away the smaller from the bigger. So it. It that doesn't matter which one is the bigger, take away the smaller from the bigger all the time. So the difference is, if you do the math, is 0 0.4. This is the trim. Trim equals 0 0.4 meters, or it could be feet, or whatever it is. So, maybe not feet, well, I'm, I'm just going with meters on this one. So that's the amount of trim. Now you also need a direction for the trim. The question is, uh, where is the draft bigger, by the bow or by the stern? Because the numbers on the hull start at the bottom and increase towards the top, meaning, meaning this is the situation that we have. The bow is immersed into the water deeper, so in this case, the bow is deeper down here is the 3.2 so we have a trim by the head that, because the bow is heavier it's called trim by the head or trim by the bow but it's called trim by the head if it was the other way around then it would be called trim by the stern the when when this is just an initial trim calculation of course like I said the point is to make the ship level both ways either both in transverse direction as well as longitudinal direction so when it's level both ways then the ship is on an even keel all right but uh, before you can do that you need to know what's the initial trim one more thing to calculate and this is where the red numbers come in we're going to calculate are we bending the ship for this you need to calculate the mean at midship. Those are the readings of the hull at midship. You do the same thing. 3.1 plus 2.9 uh, divided by 2 for the mean you're gonna get 3.0. I'm gonna put it in a red box there. 3.0. Next thing to do you need to calculate one more mean. The mean of the means. You need to calculate the mean of the forward mean draft and the aft mean draft. Those are already means, that's a mean port starboard, that's a mean port and starboard, but now you need to calculate the mean of these two numbers. Same procedure, 3.1 plus 2.7 divided by 2. The answer will be, where do I write it? 2.9 and I'm gonna put it in a blue box here. 2.9 is the mean of the means forward mean forward mean draft and aft mean draft. 
So what you do with this 2.9 and with that with that 3 is you figure out which one is bigger. Because that's going to tell you, are we bending the ship in which way? If these two numbers are identical, we're not bending the ship, we're fine. But like in this case, let me just erase that little mark there. In this case, 3 is more than 2.9 because the alligator is eating the bigger number. So in that case, that the middle, it, what this means is that the middle of the ship is higher up than the average of the fore and the aft. We're bending the ship up in the middle. So there's too much load at the front, there's too much load at the back, and the, this condition is known as, like I said, hog. So we have a condition maybe in red condition of hog now 0 0.1 meter is about yay much 10 centimeters that's a huge amount I'm not saying that's gonna rip your ship apart but that's gonna make it substantially weaker because even at rest not in uh, not in heavy seas at rest it's already being bent and it's going to be ripped apart starting at the hatches somewhere midships here in the middle okay bad situation if you have a hog or a sag of uh, a few centimeters you can live with that but uh, yeah 10 centimeters is uh, getting off the chart so this is how you can calculate hog and sag and figure out captain are we bending the ship and this is how you calculate trim the one con one calculation is dependent on another a little bit although we are not using the 0 0.4 number anywhere other than for repositioning the loads reshifting re everything and then taking an another six readings on the six major points on the hull and recalculating again ideally we should have a trim of zero with a z neither hog nor sag that's when we are on an even keel that's when the ship is the most stable and is the safest with no residual stresses on it from bending or twisting